and I'm now going to talk uh, to Gaynor Brown. And uh, Gaynor Brown has been involved with the Christmas craft team for a number of years, and she's kindly agreed uh, to chat to me. So I'll just wait for Gaynor to appear next to me on the screen. Um, you're Can there. I just clarify, I'm part of the Christmas craft team, but I never do the crafts. No, no, you're a bit like I'm me. not very crafty, so. <laughs> no, you're like me. We just wander around and talk to people, don't we, normally? <laughs> way with actually doing the uh, the activities which is uh, which is good um Gaynor, thanks for for chatting to me now just for those people who don't know you and there will be a lot on the screen who do but some who don't know you just tell us a little bit about yourself um i'm Gaynor. um i married to pete um who um yeah married to pete we've got five children um Three of my own, I've got two stepchildren, three grandchildren, um, one will be 10 on Saturday, and then seven-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, originally from Cardiff, but I've lived in Bournemouth for over 30 years. I teach swimming part-time, um, just started doing casual work and ex examining vigilator, and um, I'm also involved in school work, um, being governor and a trustee of sort of a school and a, and a multi academy trust. So I keep myself busy. So we've got two Welsh girls on the screen. Yeah, it's great, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> absolutely. Nothing like it. Um, now, Gaynor, at the start, I actually mentioned that um, we're calling uh, this season as a church a Christmas like no other. Um, but actually for you, the past three Christmases have been very different, not only for you, but also for your family, because um, your daughter, Carrie, was diagnosed uh, with cancer a couple of years back. And very sadly, Carrie died uh, last March. Um, just tell us a little bit about the story. Right, I mean, there's a, there is a lot, but just briefly, basically, um, November 17, um, we just actually, Pete and I had thought in the September, all of a sudden, we were on our own. All our children had left. Um, we thought this was a, a, a new era, a new chapter of our life. Um, our youngest had just started university in Cardiff. And all of a sudden, um, in November, Kerry had been struggling with headaches um, in the summer. She'd gone to the opticians, gone to the doctors, they'd given her glasses, they said infected sinuses. And she went back um, and just said, no, there's something wrong. And... Basically, they found a tumour, um, and after a biopsy, they said she had um, aviola rhabdomyosarcoma, which basically was a cancerous tumour, um, a very rare form of cancer, in her nasal cavity and just right under her eye. Um, and really, the next few weeks were a blur. Um, you can imagine it was out of the blue, not expected. She'd been well, fit, healthy, playing netball, going out. Um, so Christmas 17, um, it was really a Christmas of the unknown. We didn't know what the future was going to hold. We didn't know what we were going to do. And all the family came for Christmas. Um, because, but we were all extra cautious because Kerry was due to start chemo um, in, well, on December the 27th. And in fact, I look back and I laugh because Pete, bless him, didn't feel very well on Christmas Day, so I isolated him in the bedroom because I didn't want Kerry to, to catch anything. And he ended up on Christmas dinner and opened his presents via a computer, a video screen, which I know a lot of us have to do now anyway, but we sort of had a foretaste of it earlier on. Um, so we went up um, the next six months. It was a grueling six months. Um, Kerry undertook sort of nine cycles of chemo. I lived half my time in London, looking after her and part-time down here. We also ended up going to America for proton beam therapy um, for 10 weeks with just Pete and myself, which was hard work. Um, but yeah, and in the June, we just thought it was worth it. She had really hard type of chemo that the nurses called it the hardcore. Um, and she struggled with it, but she had a goal she was going to get through because it could be, she could be treated. Um, in the Ju June, July, we were told basically the treatment hadn't worked and basically they agreed in the end to do an operation. The operation was going to be, they were reluctant to do it because how near it was to the optic nerve. 
and the operation, as far as the surgeon was concerned, was a success. Um, and that was in the December. And basically, um, December 18 was a Christmas, I put a Christmas of hope. We had a great hope that 2019 would be a far better year for us and our lives would get back to normal. Um, we hadn't had completely all clear, but when she went back in January, they said, yeah, everything seems to be clear. And she was basically told to go and enjoy life. Um, so she started back to work, and but only a few weeks later, and it was February half term, um, we were told that the cancer returned. She'd gone for a normal routine scan, and they just sort of turned around and said, ah, it's, we found it in your lungs now. And she was basically told that it was... It was treatable in the sense they could hopefully contain it for a while, but it wasn't curable. And the cancer, the treatment she could have was, I put it like putting a finger in a dam. That's what it was like. It was trying to hold the cancer back for as long as possible. Kerry tried the chemo. She struggled with it. And after two cycles and bouts in hospital, she made the brave decision to stop all treatment. Um, she made that decision basically because in her mind, quality of life was far better than quantity. Um, she wasn't frightened of dying. Um, she had an energy for those who know her would know she had an energy for her friends. But she also had a love for Jesus and had an assurance of where she was going. So Christmas 19 was, I would say it was a Christmas of joy. Um, it was our last Christmas together. But Carrie absolutely loved Christmas. Um, she loved the family together. Um, and a time was spent basically with the family. We didn't have lavish presents. Um, it was just a time of being. Though I must admit, we did borrow a snow machine and had a snowstorm in our garden on Christmas Day, which was a surprise to everybody. And the neighbours all came out wondering what was happening. But, and then in March... 20, well, 21st of March, Kerry passed away. Um, thankfully, it was basically a few days before lockdown. Um, something she would have hated. She loved her family. She loved her friends. She loved going out. And I think it was something she would have struggled with. But she, yeah, she died surrounded by family and friends. So, yeah, that was our, so our last three Christmases together. Now, obviously, there have been times for you, and there still will be, uh, times of intense pain um, and sadness. So what has helped you as, as Kerry's mum to handle each day and the grief uh, that you're feeling? I think in a way for me, looking back now, the grief probably started when she was first diagnosed. Um, I know sort of we always have that hope and I remember thinking they're sending us to the United States for Proton, they're not going to spend all that money on us if it's not curable. I really had that in my heart and my mind, but it probably did start then. And the one thing that was comforting me was the way Kerry lived her life. Um, I think during an illness, it was a bit of a joke because during an illness, she had a, more holidays than I have ever had or probably will have in my lifetime. Um, every time we went to see the consultant, the consultant said, well, where have you now been, Kerry? Um, and she had a passion for life. I mean, anybody who knows Kerry would have known that her diary would have been completely full. Um, she um, had coffee dates, breakfast dates, lunch breaks, you name it. Everything was in there, jam-packed. And even in the last month, the whiteboard in her room was full of a timetable of the visitors. Um, Kerry had just, she just had an energy of life. And she wasn't looking, she had a, the way of looking at it. She, didn't look for the light in the tunnel, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. She looked for the light in the tunnel. Um, she decided that the cancer, she wasn't going to be defined by cancer, that this was just a blip in her life to eternity. Um, and I'm not saying that she found life easy, but she had a mantra, hashtag choose joy, um, and every day she would try to choose joy, even in the dark days. And there were really, really dark days. I remember in in America where she was had chemo and proton beam therapy and she was in a room and we were on our own. We ended up in A&E. We ended up in hospital. I had no one to turn to. 
everything was strange, but she even still tried to choose joy in every aspect of life. Um, and for me, that's given me a comfort. But I've also learned to enjoy the simple things in life, the simple pleasures of just looking at the sun shining through the clouds, the sea rolling. This afternoon, I was just down at the beach and I could see the sun coming through the clouds. It looked as if the perfects were on fire and there was this dark cloud going across. It was absolutely amazing. But I've learned to enjoy those little things in life. Why? Sometimes people say, well, why didn't God sort this out? And I did ask God why. Um, I cried out a number of times to ask God why, but I probably didn't wait for him um, to give me the answer. I basically just turned around to God and said, please, God, give me the strength to keep going. Give me the strength to keep going. And basically, he helped me, carried me on that journey. Um, and this is a broken world. And I just felt that he held my hand through this. And not only did he carry me through, but he also gave me a hope um, and a strength. I think I can only describe it as an internal joy. And I'm not meaning that a joy where you're all happy, smiling, thing, but something that's really internal and an inner peace. Um, and, yeah, I just think he just gave me that comfort and that hope. And basically, when Kerry passed away, we really felt a peace. And that wasn't just myself. We, she was surrounded by family and friends and I mean it was just yeah the last moment her head sort of turned up as if she was looking towards Jesus um I mean that may be just the way it was but we just really felt at peace about everything yeah yeah thanks Gaina um, for sharing that with with such honesty uh, really you know the the honest expression of, of motion, emotion and and grief and sadness and yet that hope that you were able to see um, in it all. Now you mentioned earlier that Kerry loved Christmas and um, what about the Christmas message as we think about it um, right now? What helps you to keep trusting God uh, in all of this? Because there will be a hard day, won't there? This, this goes on, grief is a process that doesn't come to an end quickly. Um, but what, what about the Christmas story just helps you to keep trusting God in your I think difficulty. Christmas gives me a time to reflect, um, a time to think um, about the real meaning of Christmas. What do we celebrate at Christmas? We celebrate the birth of Jesus. And it's Jesus has given me that hope and that assurance. Um, at Christmas, we will remember to carry, we'll remember it with tears in our eyes, but also joy in our hearts. Um, I just feel that we're Without Jesus, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would be struggling for months, years and years. Um, for many, many years, and I don't know why, but years and years ago, my favourite verse in the Bible is one that can be found right at the end, right near the end. And it tells us about the new heaven and the new earth, um, where God himself will be with his people and he will be their God and he will wipe every tear from their eyes um, as there'll be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain. The old order has passed away. And that's been my verse, my go-to verse, basically, because I know that in the end, there's a better place to come, that one day we will be together with God and there'll be no more tears for anyone. Everybody will be together at peace. And, yeah, I just find that that, to me, can do that. And I'm, I just... My wish at Christmas period is that for all of us is to reflect on why we celebrate Christmas, um, why we give Christmas presents, because life can be tough. Um, and I'm sure that many of you have been or are going or will go through difficult periods in your life. But with Jesus, we can have this hope and the joy that in the end, everything will be perfect. Um, life is hard and we never ever know what's going around the corner um, we, we hear sad things every day don't we and things that happen to us life but you can find joy in the good times and the hard times and I, I mean I just hope that you can all find some sort of joy this Christmas um, because for all of us it'll be a Christmas um, like no other they won't it but for some of us and I hope and pray that for all of us we have a hope like no other as well 
Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gaynor, on behalf of all of us uh, for sharing that with us. Um, really inspiring and thank you for pointing us to the hope that we can have uh, when we have faith, when we uh, can have the courage to face suffering and, as in Kerry's case, to face death. And yet we have that sure um, certainty of, of heaven and uh, eternal life. We really appreciate um, you talking to us uh, tonight.